Thank you for joining Jennifer Shelton Associates in our 2019 Webinar Wednesday series. We're coming to you live from downtown Washington, D.C. Our webinars are every Wednesday, and you can find the upcoming schedule on our website. Past webinars and all recordings are also on our website and on our YouTube channel, along with over 160 other recordings of federal contracting topics. All are complimentary. If you have questions for our speaker today, you can email him directly with the contact information you'll see on the last slide. All right, it's just a little bit about us. We are a Washington, D.C. based firm and provide services to federal contractors. This ranges from market analysis reports to proposal writing and also post award compliance. More information is on our website, so please visit us there. We do offer advertising in our newsletter, so please reach out to this email if you'd like more information on that. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Our speaker today is Jay Conville, and he's going to be covering Turn Capture Strategy into Proposal Win Strategy. Thank you for joining us today, Jay, and I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to you. Well, thank you very much, Jennifer. It's really great to be here with you and to talk about a subject that's near and dear to my heart and has been for uh, many decades now. So we're really excited about uh, the opportunity to talk about this goal, which is, of course, to win uh, as we go through the business development capture and then, of course, the proposal strategy. Uh, we want to win jobs, so it's always uh, fun for us uh, here at Privia to discuss those uh, elements that make that strategy uh, come to fruition uh, to win those jobs. That's what we're all about uh, here at Privia. We're a proposal company, and we want to make sure people are successful in that endeavor. So thanks for having us. Uh, if you can go to the first slide. What I'd like to do today really is talk about that integration of the different phases of business capture uh, that going from what's on the left of the slide, the, the identification of an opportunity or more aptly the shaping of an opportunity out there in the future uh, and leading ultimately to the a submission of a business proposal to win a specific job and then of course the win that we all hope to get as a result of this process. So before I do that, uh, just to define a few terms uh, that we uh, thank uh, some of our partners for providing us this information on de defining different pieces of the uh, business development process, uh, just so that we're on the same sheet of music. And I will say that over my career, I've been in all of these positions as a manager and as a participant. Uh, and sometimes in the same opportunity pursuit, I've personally found myself in each one of these phases as a key contributor or even the manager of it. But it is useful to look at the environment in these three phases so that we can talk about transition, which is really what uh, we wanted to talk about today. So of course, the first phase is the business development phase or advanced sales phase, depending on your different market. Um, and really that comes down to the identification of solutions that meet needs. So we have our organizations that we work for, our companies that we work for, and we have particular offerings and we have particular core competencies. And the business development phase is really to go find places where there is a need for those type of skills and capabilities and products, et cetera, and then align the interests of our organization with the interest of a customer organization so that they meet up at the middle in, in something that is successful for everyone. And when I say align, uh, that means that this is a long-term process. It could take uh, several years. I've, I've actually worked, Jennifer, on, on a, a, um, a business development effort that covered the span of nine years. Now, there was, of course, little wins along the way and a few losses along the way, but the entirety of that was about nine years long. And I'm, I know I'm not unique in that. So this is a long-term uh, uh, effort to align the capabilities with the need which might mean, for example, influencing research and development funding uh, on the company side or uh, in teaching uh, different aspects of the customer what the art of the possible was so that that would influence their requirements. So a very important phase uh, uh, and really is the shaping phase and then the identification, the intelligence phase, the relationship forming phase of the business process. Once that opportunity has been developed in specificity, we then enter the capture phase. And as I said, I've been a business development manager and then became the capture manager by default. And I don't even think anybody ever called me that, right? I was just the BD manager. But in many organizations, this is a very specific job to be a capture manager, to lead the capture phase. Uh, and it focuses on maximize the probability of winning a particular pursuit. 
So the business development folks have worked to shape an opportunity which now has turns itself into a potential request for proposal. Uh, well before that RFP is hits the street, the capture manager is now in there focusing to maximize the probability of winning that particular business pursuit. Now, what does that mean? That they're going to be able to leverage the company's resources, tap into the relationships that are out there, uh, get the processes began so that we can respond to that RFP when it comes out, and really, most importantly, in my mind, understand our offering and how it's specifically applies to the needs and the requirements of the customer. What do they want and how do we, how do the customer define, how does the customer define their own success? Because meeting that is what will make for a winning proposal. And then of course, something occurs normally what is a, the release of a request for information and then followed by a request for proposal or a quote. And uh, sometimes those are, uh, um, competitive and other times if if you were really great you might have been able to make that sole source uh, or unsolicited but at some point you have to actually put pen to paper and provide the details that it that the customer needs to decide to buy what you're selling and that's when the proposal phase starts and the proposal manager has the responsibility to implement and oversee a sometimes extremely convoluted process of putting pen to paper and giving the customer a work product, which is a proposal document with, a, with the appropriate uh, elements of information they need to make their decision. So that's, that's just defining that. If you can go to the next slide, I'll talk about what I think is really the key to today's presentation. While we look at the linear process from opportunity to submission that we did on the last slide, and we in the last slide, I put the win button all the way to the right. But I think that our you know, statement today really wants to drive home that where you win the opportunity is actually well before you submit your proposal. It is in the intersection and the interplay between the capture team and the proposal team, which sometimes will be many same people, but oftentimes it's not. That's where you actually win. So, you know, the, the old salt is when you're going to give a presentation, you should stand for something, not just give information, but actually stand for something. And in my, my view, this is what I'm standing for, because I've heard some folks say that really that this is a handoff. The capture team, sometimes it's just one person, the capture manager, hands off the opportunity to the proposal team, which then takes it, executes, submits a proposal and wins. I believe that at least in the business that I've been in in my career, uh, that that is a, uh, a false definition of what actually needs to happen in, in order to be successful, because it is how those two teams integrate the information, knowledge, and understanding that they have of the opportunity. That's what will determine whether they can put a, a, a winning proposal together or not. Because once the opportunity enters into the pen to paper phase, it's going to have to be reviewed and revised multiple times. And the entire team on the right-hand side from the proposal team um, in, in their writing, they have got to understand everything that the capture manager and probably the business development people before them learned about this opportunity, if it's to be reflected in their solution that they provide. We often talk about evaluation criteria. And I don't know if the people listening to this webinar have been in as many of uh, as many proposals as I have, but what I've seen in RFPs is oftentimes those evaluation criteria are cut and pasted from other RFPs that have been done before. It may vary somewhat, it may change the, the uh, relative value of the different elements of the evaluation criteria, they may change the order, but if you rely on only that, what is in that request for a proposal document, you're probably going to miss the mark when it comes down to getting that excellent mark on your technical proposal uh, especially, but other areas of your proposal as well, because it's the unofficial uh, desires of the customer uh, that will really influence their opinion of your proposal as they evaluate it. Now, don't get me wrong. I am not saying in any way that the evaluation criteria that is in the document, nor any of the other compliance elements that are uh, available to you in the RFP are unimportant. They are critically important and they must absolutely be addressed. 
But I, in my experience, it is the, the winning proposal is the one that knows and addresses all those things, but where the team also knows what the customer is really looking for. And that is in the unofficial evaluation criteria that has been built up as an agreement and a partnership and a joint understanding between the capture team, the business development team, and the customer. So it's how that is relayed to the proposal team that is the critical interplay, the intersection and the interplay. If you could go to the next slide, uh, Jennifer, thank you. So how do you get that information down? You have your business development and your capture team, and of course you have the customer and their need is up there and then you've gone through a capture strategy. The key is really, how do you get that information to these other people? And if you look at it in the most simple terms, you might say, well, just use the same people. But that is, that's a false solution because there, there's all kinds of other people who have to be involved in the proposal development who probably had nothing to do with business development and capture. Not to mention the fact that your business development and capture people have to get on to the next thing. And so they can't, you know, just, well, it's not always possible for a business development or capture manager to, to just drop what they're doing and now become part of the proposal team full-time and work on the proposal. Uh, in addition to that, when I was a capture manager, when I was a business development manager, I made a 10, 15, 20 different opportunities in the in the pipeline at one time and i had to work all of them and as we know if if you're in the proposal business a lot oftentimes if you go into especially a large proposal you disappear until you're done and you just if you if you have a process in your company where you're doing that to business development capture people you're going to find out you're going to have these bathtubs periodically where there's no opportunities because the time that they that they were out of the loop working on the proposal uh, it, it, they're not finding new proposals. So how do you get that down? The, there's new people, there's your proposal manager themselves, you know, they got to know what's compliant and what's not compliant. There's your executive team who's really got to understand the customer and understand their own organization and what they can actually provide. Somebody, the delivery, the program manager, however you want to define it, has to know that what you're proposing can actually be resourced and executed. Uh, you know, you can go into a proposal and say the sky's the limit and we can invent everything and deliver it all for nothing. But, you know, the customer's not going to believe that. And the customer has to have a confidence that you know what you can actually deliver. And then, of course, what is the solution? The solution expert, the technical experts, the um, SMEs, your partners, other people, they've, they've got to know, okay, well, what is it that we're actually proposing and does it meet the customer's need? And then finally, and I don't want to leave this off at all, is your, your whole pricing team. And you could also include under them legal and other, other players from outside the normal business development process because you're putting your company on the line by saying you're going to deliver this. So you've got to get all this knowledge to all these people who have not really participated in the uh, effort up to this point at all. So the, the key intersection is understanding the needs of the customer but then also getting that information down to the people. And if you could go to the next slide, Jennifer. You know, there's ways to do that. And uh, it really comes down to your process documentation. And I've been in the uh, business a long time and um, you see the little typo on my company one, but a lot of companies, they, they develop their own process documentation. They, they have their own methods, if you will, of keeping track of the information that needs to be relayed from one team member to another. Uh, there's also uh, capture management information out there from places like Shipley and APMP that take you through different processes uh, and, and how you do this. But what, what do you need? You know, you need to know the client history. What are the strengths of the relationships that have been built up and what are they based on? What's the past performance in with this client, but also with this solution? And then very importantly, which sometimes can be very hard to put your finger on, who is it who is really the influencer on the customer side who, whose requirements have to be met in order to get that, you know, that blue rating on your proposal? Who, who is the decision maker? Who are the official decision makers? Often you'll never know that, but sometimes you can find that out. But also who are the un, unofficial decision makers, the influencers who are saying to, to the uh, acquisition uh, decision team, this is what we really want. Here's, here's an image of what we really want to see. Uh, uh, see in a proposal. This is what defines our success. Who, who are those people? And have you talked to them? 
And once you do, you got to document that, and that's got to flow forward into the rest of the team. Obviously, the competition. You know, uh, very few sole source opportunities out there, uh, and you know, anything big and worthwhile is probably going to get competition. You know, I. I uh, was told one time I was worried about competition when I first came into business. I said, oh, my gosh, there's competition. And, you know, somebody mentioned to me that if you don't have any competition, you probably don't have a market. So that's that's good advice. So there's going to be competition in there and you have to understand them. Uh, we, you have to do the analysis of them and you have to relay that to the uh, team. Uh, and you have to know where you can have an advantage over the competition. Where are your discriminators? And, you you know, probably go through some process of black hat padding and to, to understand what the competition will propose. And then you want to ghost them based off of that and your analysis of where they are. That information is usually resident with the capture team or the business development team and not the staff that will likely be the predominant part of the proposal team. So you've got to move that forward in documentation. Uh, then, of course, the fit analysis, uh, you can call it a lot of different things. I like to think of it as uh, does our um, does what we offer meet what they need? Uh, you know, we don't want to try to shove round pegs and square holes, and uh, we we or I think it's the other way, square pegs and round holes. And and if we're going to win, we have to have a good match here. So we have to know what the customers' challenges are, what their goals are, and the team when they're portraying that our offering to the customer, they have to have that in mind all the time. Of course, our strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats that uh, to us, so that we can reflect those in our um, proposal and then our position and price to win, which is of course critical and should be a major part of our process. And that, that has got to be brought forward. And then there's always uh, the win themes, the discriminators and the proof points, which form the basis of everything we're going to say in our proposal. So those should be part of your documentation and they should be moved forward. Uh, next slide, if you would. The way to communicate those are really three. So you can verbally communicate and have a lot of meetings to talk to people. And I think that that's very important and you should do that. Uh, but you should also centralize your data so that people can access the data from wherever they are, whenever they need it. Uh, and it's not a serial process with like, you know, who's got this? We don't know, call Bob, I don't know where he is. You know, we don't wanna have that. So we wanna have the ability to have distributed teams continue to work 24 seven if needed by accessing information that is kept in a centralized place. And then you gotta constantly evolve and share that information. So it is not one time, to go back to the slide I had before, where it was this like iterative process, revise, review, revise, review. Uh, some people use the color team review method, some people use agile, doesn't matter. As long as you're revising and reviewing and evolving your information uh, and you're able to quickly align your changes to new incoming information as well as better understood information. So you can verbalize it, you can centralize your information, and of course, share it. And if you could go to the next slide, gentlemen. And this is really important. So here's the game changer. To institutionalize this intersection, the bringing forward of that information into your proposal team's knowledge base has a huge and documented impact. You're talking about people, content and their ability to collaborate. So uh, McKinsey did a study which showed that if the people are able to be involved, if the right people are able to be involved in decision-making along the chain, then you get about a 20 to 25% improved productivity. And what they mean by that is giving people access to you know, on-the-go type of applications, centralized data and places to go and a way to get there and collaborate with other people. 20 to 25 percent improved productivity is a lot. If you're spending a million dollars on a proposal, then that's $250,000 of bid and proposal money that you're saving. So it is a big, big deal. The second one, where's your content? If you centralize and manage your content in dedicated folders with a knowledge sharing uh, architecture and you manage your versions and have configuration management over your work product, McKinsey also shows that you can reduce the amount of time your people spend searching for information by 35%. And another statistic, which is not on the chart, is that's a lot of executives, that is most of the time that they spend is looking for the right information. So if you can reduce that by 35%, you're really making money. And then lastly, all that's great. You have the people, you have the content, but you got to collaborate. You know, so organizations that 
don't collaborate are the ones that fail. You know, somebody knew the right answer and nobody asked them. Uh, Salesforce did a study where they showed that 86% of workplace failures, project failures, not just business development ones, but all kinds of failures are, are attributed by the employees themselves to, to a failure to collaborate amongst the right people in the, on the team. So what does that mean to us? The game changers are you can have anytime, anywhere uh, access to your people. Uh, we all know, you know, we're using mobile apps all the time. You can be on the go. You can have a proposal management system like what we offer at Privia that provides you the ability to tap into that from anywhere. I'll tell you a cool story, and I know I'm coming up on time, but a cool story. Uh, we had a client who had an operation that was in multiple countries around the world, and they had a lot of proposals. And there was one of these proposal shops that just knocked out really complex proposals, but at a high rate. And so what they did using uh, content collaboration platforms, proposal management tools, is they gave their people access to write that proposal basically around the clock. So as one team would leave the work on the west on the east coast of the United States, the west coast team would take over, and then the you know the European team would take it over, etc. And they would work this proposal around the clock. Very cool. I mean, it takes a lot of they were they're obviously advanced at doing it, but you can see the impact of giving people the access. And then on the content, it's the same thing. You know, if you know that when you're coming into an, uh, a uh, proposal review, for example, and, or maybe you're just writing the proposal or wherever you are in the process, if you know that what you're looking at is the right version, it is configuration managed and you are not wasting your time, then you're gonna be, and, and you're able to find that information when you need it, and if you need more, you can find that too. That's gonna to make a huge difference. And that's a game changer. Um, get away from sending stuff to people via email, which is the death, right? And you know, you don't want that serial process. You wanna have one place. In our concept, in our company, everything that's being provided as content for the proposal exists in one place. That's in the virtual world on the web and everybody comes to it. Yes, it's highly secure and yes, there's permission uh, uh, capability so that people only see what they're allowed to see. All that is there, but the key is that it's there in one place. So when I go and I make a comment, somebody comes later, they see that comment. I don't have to send it to them an email, then they don't read it, and then it gets out of, you know, then somebody else sends them an email and they read that first, and none of that. You get it all in one centralized place, and you version control it, and you configuration management. And then lastly and not least, is giving real-time collaboration to people, the ability for them to do it in real-time and asynchronously as well, and then to be able to report on that, because that's where you build your solution. So you know that people are participating and they are participating. So we think that the game changer in this world, the intersection between the capture team, the way to turn capture strategy, all that good work that has been done by the BD people and the capture people is to leverage the real-time, anytime, on-the-go, centralized capabilities and the collaborative capabilities of content collaboration platforms, which are new, uh, relatively new, and really starting to take off, uh, and to look for ones that are really built for proposals to help you get over the line. So we, we believe that's the game changer. I think it's very strongly after my career is that intersection between capture and proposal so critical and if you can do it, there are tools now out there to support you. Uh, you can really get to the winning solution. So thanks, Jennifer. That was um, what I had to offer today. And I really appreciate the opportunity to come on and talk about. Yeah, thank you, Jay, uh, for joining us today and sharing your knowledge and insight. If you have any questions for him, you can email him or call him at the phone number or email shown on your screen. And this concludes the webinar. Thank you.